Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I'm Noah Everwes, designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro West, creative tech here at Adafruit. And every week we come to share 3 print projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Yep, this is a show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, making inspirational projects. So, on this morning's show, this week's coupon code is Glowhorn. Glowhorn. Yes, we made a unicorn horn, a remix to the unicorn horn that we did last year. And this, uh, this year I'm not wearing it because it's, I put it on a hoodie and it's too hot. Mm -hmm. So I have it on my hat. Mm -hmm. It's black. And um, yeah, there are black unicorns. Very cool. Those Welcome, everybody. Goth unicorn. It's my goth unicorn horn. Goth unicorn. I like to wear black. Welcome, everybody, on mm -hmm. YouTube and Twitch. Um, Say so what's up to the people in the chat room. Yeah. We got Deco, Stuff with Kirby, a Hello, everybody. IV is the first. And in Twitch chat room, Nardog, <laughs> we're showing the pre-show uh, people some of the yeah. Uh, so on. if you're on Twitch, we are uh, we we do a little pre-show now. Uh, he's it was saying, like two uh, minutes long for the <laughs> seat that we showed to light up your butt. <laughs> it is to light up your butt. Yes, is, yes. Lights up the floor too, and yeah. everything else around it. Mm -hmm. It keeps we'll your butt we'll keeps it your butt warm. <clears throat> Hey everybody! Okay, so that's this week's uh, coupon code. code. Yeah, yeah it's take so ten percent off if you want to get some printers, film it, and of course all of the lovely uh, controllers and electronics that bring your projects to life. Yes, take advantage of that. Yeah, that is how support we the show and support your habit. That is how we uh, pay the bills around here. And if you're crazy and you order a lot of stuff, you order two hundred dollars more, you get free shipping, ground shipping anyway. Some restrictions apply. <laughs> uh, for the folks in NYC, we still do that same delivery stuff, which is pretty epic. Mm -hmm. A lifesaver for students in the area or agencies that need to get their displays up. Okay. And Daily. Uh, this is our Daily. newsletter for maker business, electronics, 3D printing, and wearables. Get all your daily dose of tips and news. Info Daily. That's right. That's right. InfoDaily.com. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's that's the run of the show. All right. Let's do uh, what are you type typing. So guess what, guys? What what? Real quick. In the chat room. Some people we don't want to leave out. Oh, yeah, writer, yeah. Mark. Mark and writer. Hey, guys. And John. And yes. You get a shout out. PG. You get a shout out. Okay. <laughs> so so uh, we got some special news. Um, next week, we'll, we will not be streaming live from Florida because we'll be in New York City. We're going to be attending Maker Fair. Maker Fair is next weekend, and we're going to do the show live in New York, which is pretty exciting. We may have, oh, yeah, we will have a special guest, which will be... Um, He'll be he'll be a surprise, so it's cool. Somebody at Adafruit. Why is it a surprise? He just said he just confirmed. It's Dano oh, who okay. does a Dano lot of. Dano, I, I wanted to be surprised. <laughs> like, hey, it's Dano. Anyway, Dano uh, runs uh, manufacturing. No fabrication. Mm -hmm. Fabrication at uh, Adafruit. So we'll chat with uh, Dano, catch up with him, see what he's working on. There's some internal uh, build parties and stuff, so yeah. we'll talk about. And uh, he's the ma the three printing hubs mayor as well. So okay. yeah, Dano will be on the show next week. So um, this week I wanted to share with you guys uh, next week's project because I will not be able to travel with this project, so I won't be able to show it to you next week. So I figured I'd show it to you now. Obviously, I got the horn. That's all cool. Not much to it. But I'm really excited about this project. I haven't done a cosplay prop in a while. This is a, a mace. <laughs> so a couple weeks ago, I shared with you guys the D20. I, I remade the icosahedron shape in Fusion 360. I showed you guys how I put it together. Uh, using uh, three-dimensional sketches, which is really cool, really cool feature to make sketches. So I was like, I, I need to make something out of it. And I made it into this cosplay prop. So it's not something mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, it's not something from like a, a very popular uh, video game or anything like that, but uh, what I like about it is that it is just sort of, um, not generic, but it's, it's special in the sense that it does have the icosahedron as the, as the mace head. And I did a little bit of research. This is actually called a Morning Star, which is a, a club. Uh, it's a club with spikes on it, right? It's a medieval 14th century weapon. 
Um, and it's pretty big. I really like how this turned out. Um, so a couple things, a lot of different materials going on here. So all this gray stuff here is actually steel composite PLA from the guys at Protopasta. And the cool stuff about this, it's polishable. <coughs> That's like the main thing that you can do with this material is that you can sand it down and polish it. So I managed to polish all of these 19 spikes and it has like this reflective, it's reflective uh, surface to it. And then I threw them in the tumbler the rock tumbler that we have uh, using steel screws as, as the medium and they look pretty shiny and, and nice. Uh, the, the gray frame here though, I ran out of time so I didn't sand this down so it's still got that rough texture to it but it's kind of nice contrast. And then the, this white here is actually transparent PLA that I sanded down. It's printed in everyday PLA from Protopasta. So all this is like Protopasta here. And inside, it's completely hollow. Cool thing about it is though, it has a uh, NeoPixel Jewel. That's that little quarter sized PCB that has seven NeoPixel LEDs. So that's mounted in this little, uh, this little holder here. And then D20 is all nice and hollow. And then this part here uh, is glued to that, to this little triangle piece. So all this is printed with no support material. And so that these two pieces, this rod here has threads on the end. So they, all, they actually all twist together, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. You don't have to glue these pieces because they twist together, so it's easy assembly, easy disassembly. And it's completely hollow, the rod, so I have a USB cable that I've chopped up and I wired it through here. And in the handle is where all the electronics are. Inside the handle is the Adafruit trinket and uh, a 2200 milliamp cylindrical battery. So we have a lot of LiPo batteries, but we also have cylindrical batteries. And this is where that really fits perfect for this project because it's completely um, you know, cyl cylindrical. So that's where most of the electronics are. I got the NeoPixel up here and most of the electronics are here. So we've got a pretty long wire. That's why I use the USB cable. What I like about the, um, the handle is that this is printed in cork fill. That's a wood composite PLA from the folks at uh, Color Fab. And there's no sanding on this. It's just printed as is. It looks really nice. And, and most of these weapons do have wooden handles, so I think that matches really well. Now, this rod was printed in uh, black PLA on our Delta Orion bot. That prints really tall things. So this is 180 millimeters. This didn't fit on the, this didn't fit on the printer bot play. Actually, all this was printed on the printer bot play. But none of this couldn't fit on the printer bot. This couldn't fit on the flash forge. Couldn't fit on the replicator, too. So I had to print it on the Delta because it could print really long things. So that's how that works. And then, of course, there's like coils uh, on the inside of this that, that allows everything to screw together. And at the very bottom, this is the pommel of the weapon, which is like the butt of the weapon. I, this is the first time we're using this button. So on the Adafruit shop, we had, they used to be called waterproof buttons, but we changed the name to a rugged metal. So it's actually an aluminum button that has a LED ring on it. So we have different styles. We have a momentary switch, and we also have a toggle switch. This is the on and off toggle button, so you can turn it on and off. And as you turn it on, it glows red, and then the bootloader happens, and then the NeoPixel turns on. So pretty, pretty cool. And this is just printed in gray, silver PLA from Ulti Machine. A lot of different materials going on here. A couple of different um, polish, uh, you know, uh, finishing techniques. Um, this rod, I sanded it down a lot and then I spray painted it with some primer and this like nickel uh, silver color mm -hmm. which gives it kind of a reflectivity to it so I really like it pretty cool it's got some great weight to it um, it's like 11 ounces uh, it's pretty long I, I don't know how long that is but it's pretty long yeah, um, yeah I was looking on the Adafruit blog and somebody actually made a uh, Hawk Girl, that's a DC Comics Hawk Girl's mace weapon. Mm -hmm. And this kind of, you know, it's a little bit bigger, but she has different styles because she, she's gone through many different iterations. Oh, yeah. So I like this a lot. But the cool thing is that, you know, the goal for this project is to inspire other cause prop makers to incorporate um, NeoPixels and microcontrollers into their projects and um, kind of design around it, design for it. So it's pretty neat. This could all be made with foam. This could, you don't have to 3D print it. Uh, even if you don't have the electronics, it still looks pretty cool. So <coughs> I like it. Yeah, so at the very well. least, you can take the way that you wired everything up, the parts and components yes. to come up with a, you know, a different way to arrange it into a different sort of. Part. Yeah, this could be a um, <coughs> staff. This could be a battle axe. This could be a wearable, uh, what are they called, gauntlet. That'd be kind of cool. So yeah, I'm really happy with this, the way it turned out. Uh, I 
kind of really rushed it. I tried to do it pretty quick so that I could come up with it so in, in time for Halloween. So what I want to show you now is uh, this piece here. So I printed out these pieces. And um, the reason why this didn't work out is because uh, although I was able to fit the battery, wasn't able to fit a cable and the battery. So uh, you have to really con consider what you're fitting into. So this is how it, it, it comes apart. Um, that's what, one of the benefits of having uh, being able to make custom threads is you can make things uh, as, a, as, a, as a modular assembly. So it's pretty cool. So this is pommel and it has an end stopper. No support material required here. You just print it in the right orientations. You got a hole there to stuff the electronics in. And here's the rod. It just connects like that. Really easy to sand too because there's not much detail to it. And I kind of like that, that there's not much detail to it. Um, the, all, the, all the attention is here in the head. And of course, the spikes are rounded. You, you can make them spiky, but then you, you kind of run into either some printing problems, because printing very sharp things is, is, can kind of be of a problem. It was, you know, when you don't have an active cooling fan, it kind of gets droopy. So that's why I rounded these off. But the printer bot did an amazing job on these. And they're, they're actually all hollow. Everything here is hollow. It's kind of mm -hmm. cool. The frame is just like, you know, uh, uh, two perimeter or three perimeters or whatever. So it's pretty tough. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that's it. Oh, and there's a coil here that wraps around. Doing so many coils. There's a lot of coils going on in this design, uh, both for functionality and for aesthetics reasons. So I think it's pretty cool. So it's completely hollow in there. You see it in there? There you go. Hollow, hollow, hollow. So there you go. I like it. It'll be next week's project. Uh, I'm working on the guide. The project video is already done, which is a lot of fun to shoot. Just kind of swinging it around and being all crazy with it. So if you want to pick up a NeoPixel Jewel or an Adafruit Trinket, which we should have brought out so you can see what it looks like. So nice and small. Tiny. It's about the size of this guy right yeah, here. Yeah, it all fits in the pommel because it's yeah. like, yeah, it's great. So and this that's is excellent for fitting everything inside because usually when you have wires and boards inside there, it just turns into a big old yeah. clustered nest of, you know, tangled wires. Yeah, no, it's um, Somebody nice. was saying, oh, you should add like a motion detection on there. Yes, uh, yes, yes. do have those. We were thinking about that. An accelerometer, accelerometer. Uh, even a poor man's accelerometer, which is the tilt switch. So when mm -hmm. you, when you, we have this, uh, this demo code where it's called the Neo, it's button cycler. So when you push a button, it cycles through different colors, through different animations. That is definitely uh, opportunities for other folks to remix. Uh, I just quickly put this together, but mm -hmm. yes, accelerometer, mm -hmm. a tilt switch, We'd have to, um, uh, capacitive touch, maybe. Maybe you could print this in uh, um, capaci uh, conductive PLA mm -hmm. as, a, as a... So you can just touch it to turn so it on. So you can touch it to turn it on. The There's yes. so many cool things you could do with it. Add uh, sensibility. You could, you could add at the end of the pommel, or yeah, at the end of the pommel, you could add a light sensor so you could change the color depending on what it reads as a light. Mm -hmm. So many cool... And all that code's already kind of there on the Adafruit Learning System. So... Lots of cool uh, abilities to add um, extra sensors to it. Very great. Great, great ideas, guys. Yeah, like when you swing it, it could change. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, is that chat over there updating? Terry be saying, nice use of the coil feature to make a grip leather wrap. Yeah, look. there's like exactly. 101 uses for the... Um, <laughs> for the coils, yes. And in the Twitch chat, uh, Nardex saying, coils on the handle, coils on the unicorn, coils everywhere. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I have coil. On the, yeah, it yeah. is coil week. It's coil season, not unicorn season. <laughs> cool. So Kirby's got a few jewels in the toolbox. And then someone's asking it, yes. that we should break something with it. We definitely want to do a <laughs> man-at-arms style I, like a hero fruit. shot at the pumpkin. end, yeah, where it's like, <laughs> oh, uh, like the Rasta's pumpkin, like he wrote haters on it, and then <laughs> he, he lit his uh, cannon on it and blew the haters away. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Yeah, that'd be nice to do, yeah. Uh, it's pretty sturdy and pretty strong and got great weight to it, so yeah, I'm it sure it would... someone if you hit. <laughs> I think it would hurt, yeah. That's, that's a great idea. We'll give that a shot. It'd make a great Instagram uh, yeah. post. Remember, if you guys want to pick up any of these components to build your own, if you want to jump ahead... Glow horn. If we show proof that you actually build these out, we actually hand out files in advance. Yeah, that's true. So if you want to build it now, so you can build it out. let me know. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at the Mace walkthrough for this week's That's actually, oh yeah, so, chat. Yeah, so I'm I will changing. upload that. It is in my sequencer. I will export that. I don't have it right now, Pedro. Ah, okay. But I will export it out. So I do have a uh, Alaire Belair that will go out later today where I talk about uh, how I made the D20 frame 
which piggybacks off last week's Lair Belair, where I, I did the, it was like a quick Lair Belair, where we did it live here on the show. Mm -hmm. I showed you how I, I used the 3D sketches and, and a golden ratio rectangles to create the D20. So I piggyback off that, and then I show you how I made the frame, which is a little bit of a uh, project some sketches, offset them, extrude them, delete some faces, a little bit of a, mm -hmm. of a workflow, but uh, I think it's cool to make a, to make this uh, icosahedron frame. So there it's you go. Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, like cool. It. All right. Kirby's saying that he has a couple of jewels in a toolbox he's been itching to use. Yeah. This is a perfect project for that. Yeah, I haven't used the jewel yet. Um, or, or this button. There's like no guides that use this, uh, this cool button. Yeah. So if you guys have a great project, instead of using like a slide switch, that little dinky That's slide so switch, I love this, this button. Um, I actually want to make it into a doorbell as well, it would be really cool. And it's real metal, it's aluminum, yeah. so it's cool. And it's not so um, big too, right? And it's about bit. this big, ah. it's not that big. I had to increase it a little bit, okay. compensate for the, for the size. I that's actually wanted to have it size. here, <clears throat> but I was like, oh, I had to have it protruding this way. So that's mm. why I put it on the bottom, which, which ended up working really well. Cool stuff. All right, now it's time for a shop talk. I will turn this off now. I'm pretty sure the battery will last a while. It's 2200 milliamps. It's mm -hmm. going to last a while. And it's not too many uh, pixels with the dual seven, on yeah. Full brightness, because I just want the full brightness. All right, so Shop Talk, we have something very special. We are sponsoring. What are we sponsoring? Again, uh, Kirby mentioned this too. Oh, we should enter this into the Halloween prop contest on. Oh, wait, no, this is this is different Oh, this is a different okay. one, yeah. Yeah, well, that, that's a different one that's happening. Check it out. We are sponsoring this contest with Pinshape. So, Pinshape is an awesome uh, sharing repo site. Uh, the Formlabs guys actually just acquired them, so they are mm -hmm. they're here to stick around. The community really wanted them to stick around. Uh, we're uploading all of our designs. This week's project is on Pinshape, so check out Pinshape and register if you haven't already, but check this out. This is called the Design for Electronics Contest. It ends uh, on October 15th, so that's 23 days, 16 hours, and 41 minutes away. So let me just read for you. Uh, so you get to win a Robo C2 3D printer. That's the new printer that's out on Kickstarter right now. So this one's challenged to create a design that, you can, that can be brought to life or used with electronics. You do not need to purchase any electronics to participate, but your design should keep electronics in mind. Entries can include everything from uh, lampshades to Raspberry Pi cases to light switch covers and toy cars. Uh, need some inspiration? Check out some Invader Fruits designs. Woohoo! So first prize winner, you're going to get a Robo C2 3D printer. You'll get a $200 Adafruit gift card, one spool of Pro Filament, MH Pro Filament, and another spool of Nylon X Filament, and you can get any color uh, of this Pro Filament. Second place, this is cool, you get to win a M3D microprinter, our favorite baby printer, and uh, two spools of M MH Pro Filament in any color. And then third place, you get to win this crafty 3D pen from Matter Hackers. So all the sponsors are Adafruit, Matter Hackers, mm -hmm. M3D, and Robo 3D. Very cool. Here's a nice little uh, inspiration project here. I like this. Pretty cute. So cool. Patty, enter. You design something that uh, with the electronics in mind. And then step two, once you've created your masterpiece, upload it to pin shape, and you check the little box that says submit this model to the design. So awesome, awesome. We're, me and Pedro are one of the judges. Uh, the CEO of Robo3D is one of the ju judges. His, uh, his name is Bryden. And there's another uh, pin shape ambassador, Explore Making, who is uh, the third judge. So there's a little bit of things here, criteria that we'll be judging against, like image quality, print quality, assembly instructions. Our personal favorite. Yeah, uh, documentation is very, very huge yeah. here at Adafruit. Uh, add design functionality, the application, the technical experience, the ease of printing. All that will be considered in, this, uh, in, your, in your entry. And they, they have a nice little note. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, you can get with some folks in their form and uh, reach out to the community who might be able to pr uh, print it for you. So that's pretty cool. Uh, there's some, some rules and eligibility. What I really like is the contest is open worldwide. So it's not just you strictly to the US. That's awesome. Sorry, I was just checking back in the mm -hmm. chat. There's some Q&A. Uh, I'll have the link, but you could just go to Pinshape. They have so many contests going on. They're, they're, they're doing it up when it comes to contests. They still got one going on with uh, Protopasta's print contest, which is really cool as well. So check this out. If this interests you, you have your, your chance to win lots of very cool prizes. I think that's it. We'll be talking about this 
uh, week by week on a weekly basis, and we'll do some more promotions and things like that. But this is the first uh, um, look at it. Yeah, it was pu it was published uh, I think last week on Friday or Saturday, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's been going on. Some folks know about it, and there's a you can comment on it. I believe there's co comments over here, there's comment tabs. If you want to have any questions or anything like that, there you go. So that's going to lead me to if you guys want the inspiration, we have a 3D printing tag. So if you go to learn.adafruit.com and you and you roll over the the tab, just making sure I'm there. There's all sorts of categories: Internet of Things, Pi MicroPython, and we have 3D printing. Uh, the majority of them are our projects, but it's great that we have a lot of new folks that are helping out. Um, John Park, his projects are there. We've got some stuff um, from Rick Winscott and a lot of other great people, too. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, you can even remix one of our projects, like, like make this. What I really want to do with this uh, fume extractor is like put a tripod adapter on mm -hmm. it and maybe make it into like a robot-looking thing, like where his yeah. mouth is sucking, you know, yeah. sucking. So if you're like a like a designer who likes uh, character design stuff, you can totally remix any of these things. Like Mega Man, Air Man or yeah, something. Yeah, like, like Air that. Man. Oh, that'd be so <laughs> cool. Uh, just more, uh, what do you call it, um, functional utilitarian things like LED barn doors, an on-air sign. There's a lot, a lot of stuff. There's seven pages worth of projects. So take a look at this. All sorts of projects from uh, D20 bath bombs to Halo energy swords. To Daft Punk. To Daft yeah. Punks. To, re to portable... Um, Cordless, soldering irons, a LED of, headphones. A lot of camera projects. A lot of camera projects. Here's a really cool buggy that uh, Rick That's Winscott so made. Purple People Eater, just time for Halloween. Got camera some sliders. Uh, camera sliders. <laughs> a lot of charging, stuff. D20s, wireless charging. Yeah. <clears throat> so, speaking of wireless charging, Pedro, do you want to share with us something? So, last week we talked about our little project for wirelessly charging your phone. And um, just wanted to confirm, yes, the sevens do work with this guy here. What's this guy here? The seven, the iPhone seven plus. Yeah, Yay. so it's using our um, T charging uh, transmitter and receiver. You get here. And this would be an excellent project to remix. Yeah, um, you could enclose it, it, uh, it, turn it into like a character, have like a tripod mount on there. That'd be cool. And again, this is using the little lightning port um, wireless charging receiver. Yeah, so that works perfectly. Apple didn't mess around with none of that, so that works perfectly. Yay! Yeah, that's if, cool. If y'all are wondering, uh, Pedro and I are under the weather. <laughs> yeah, we are and I sick again. The Pokemon uh, case two. All it really is is just the increase in the cutout for that. Yeah, you can easily do it because inside of Fusion, you just tell it, "Hey, update the sketch." And Very boom, cool. You're good to go. Good stuff. <clears throat> so that's cool, and of course functional. the little um, Chargito little project as well. Now works with the Series Two Apple Watch, so you can quickly recharge that as well. Yeah, which got us a little nervous. You know, they got rid of the headphone jack. We're like, what else did they get rid of? Did they get oh, rid yeah. of wireless charging? Did they and change again, the MFI protocol? <laughs> so it's a PowerBoost 1000C inside there. You have the option to recharge your phone as well, so you could plug this in and charge your watch at the same time. Really good, handy, uh, nice little set to update your iOS devices hardware-wise to make them even better than they are already. Does yeah. the iPhone 7 have wireless charging built in? No, it does not. Oh. <laughs> and the sucky thing about it is that we never used the headphone um, jack for anything until we wanted to use it for doing camera input. Yeah, so, so let's move on to the next section. Yeah. So some of the filming that we're going to be doing at Maker Faire, last year we whoa, were whoa, using... Whoa, whoa. Maker Faire, that's the main topic. So Maker Faire is happening. A lot of folks from Adafruit will be there. Like we're seven people posse will be there. Yeah, seven <laughs> Adafruit folks will be there. Uh, we'll be doing some coverage. Uh, John Parker will be speaking. And we're hoping to meet up with some awesome folks. You folks, of course. Um, I really want to meet up with uh, Brook Drum and the folks at the Mosaic Manufacturing. Check out their palette and any other vendors that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but to actually do the coverage and stuff, last year we used GoPros. We are trying to be lightweight, but we still had to manage offloading cars. We had to bring our laptop. We had to offload things. So what we're that trying to do... Thing, yeah. So this year we're going to just shoot everything on our iPhones, edit right inside iMovie. And if cell coverage is favorable, we're going to just stream it live. 
Uh, we're going to be doing that is with the new DJI Mobile uh, stabilizer. That seems great. So they have the um, YouTube streaming right inside there. And we've been doing a lot of tests with this, and it's really good. Like, it has the face tracking feature on there, so it'll just track your face. You can mount it on a tripod. And as we're speaking with the guests, we can move around, and it'll just move around with you. And one of the coolest features is the motion time lapses. So yeah, it's great. That. I was sharing some, uh, some of that on Twitter. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that great is, functionality, yeah. And we're going to do a lot of the coverage for that. And then um, the little USB sticks uh, with the lightning port on there so we can transfer footage between phones. External storage, right? Yeah, so this is, uh, I forgot what it is, 256 or 128? 128 yeah. gigabytes, yeah. Yeah, so we can plug that in, switch between phones, so while one's like charging or uploading, we can swap around all the clips and do all the B-roll editing right inside there. And a lot more efficient, a lot less carrying like, you know, 200 pounds of camera gear. <laughs> and Batteries and monitors and LCDs. Ouch. <laughs> Excuse me. Writers asking how much do the tickets cost at Maker Fair? Pedro, you you bought some for uh, kiddo and, and wife. Do you remember? Uh, I it's think on the it website. Was like Fifty bucks. Maybe? Fifty bucks. Okay. Yeah. Yanni's saying uh, GoPro has Karma drone. Yeah. I am very interested. Pedro in wants that. to buy all the new toys. <laughs> um. I am very interested. Makerfair.com slash New York, new dash York. But before I get the karma, I, I'm going to have to wait until the, what is it, the 20, whenever the um, DJI announcement is for their Mavic drone, which Maverick folds up. Or Mavic? Mavic, I think. Mavic? So the, the arms fold up as well. I have, I have to look at that before I spring for the GoPro one. But yes, I am very interested in that one as no. well. It's like as cheap as $35, $25. And then you get educational discounts and stuff. Yeah. And all the way up to yeah, 80 bucks ID, for uh, to adult weekend pass. So check it out. We'll be getting in through Amido <laughs> Pass, but they were so slow accepting our application that I just bought tickets. So. Well, for Brandy and, and Kiddo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Consider it a donation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So uh, we'll be tweeting and all that. So if you guys want to meet up, we'll, we'll be there. Okay, um, sorry, my, my throat just got crazy. Um, is there anything else that we want to cover? Uh, taking a look at the notes here. Please bear with us, guys. Uh, I think this goes into Community Mates. Talking about yeah. Kirby's awesome remix All right, of the TV Torch. <laughs> let's go to Community Makes, guys. If you guys have any community makes that you'd like, to share on the, did you like us to share on the show, please email us at support at adafruit.com. So Kirby made a remix uh, to, um, to Tony's Techno Tiki project. And he 3D printed a heart, put an LED inside, a NeoPixel. And it's a pretty cool project that uses IR uh, receiver and transmitter um, to trigger different animations. So this, is gr this could be a great uh, Halloween decoration or just a decoration in general. It's pretty cool. It's using a Gemma. Uh, a lipo battery and like I said the IR receiver transmitter remote and I was just looking at the YouTube video of it like flipping through some animations pretty cool I like it it's like a low polygon heart and um, I think he got this at Target the little glass um, what do you call them container I guess it's gonna be pretty cool so check it out great job on uh, the guide um, Kirby instructables great place to put your stuff <coughs> Looks pretty cool. Here's the, uh, the learning guide if you want to pick up the code and get and see what all the components are. Um, yeah, a lot of options to remix this and stuff. So, really cool. Yay. I really like the Beating heart, heart. There. It looks so cool. Of yeah. course, PT was really into this, so yeah, he awesome loves job, Kirby. Yeah, he loves stuff. Cool. Check that out, guys. And um, is there like a follow or something on... Uh, an inventable instructables. Was. Maybe there is. There's like a hate, like a fart. Let me check it out. Vote for it too. I think there's a contest for the Halloween thing. So Give check Kirby that out. A vote. This is awesome. Yep. Cool. Next up, we have Aiden's uh, bouncy ball. <laughs> so this was printed in Ninja Flex, and he came on the show until this week and last week as well, showing his progress, and he did a really great job on on kind of showing his his process, his findings and a great use of the lattice infill uh, in 
a mesh mixer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's pretty cool. Check it out. Now he was talking about a way to um, to vary the like the thickness or the yeah. There's a gradient feature, so you can have mm -hmm. variable. Uh, mm -hmm. Infills, and really there is cool. a way to do it inside of Maya as well. It's using like the weight paint brush tools inside there. I gotta figure okay. it out, but there is a way to actually do that by just brushing on what you want to. That'd be great um, for character. Uh, that's exactly what it's for. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. yeah, makes a point that uh, Disney Research Group actually did some stuff. Uh, did the Stanford Bunny where variable pieces like mm -hmm. his ear was more flexible than his body. Yeah. So a lot of cool applications for it. It's a cool. But, uh, uh, yeah. Settings to explore. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Great job, Aiden. Thanks for coming on the show and tell and sharing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. That's all I got. I think it's going to be it for the Thank show. you guys for sharing. That's not it for the show. What else have we got? Q&A. What do you guys have? Any questions? Any questions? Take the chat room. <laughs> short, show, short show today. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so who was asking on Twitch and stuff you're all good yeah on Twitch and on YouTube um writer was asking about the Lily drone um and I just answered that the Lily drone yeah the little selfie drone is that drone. thing real he says it's still in pre-order I haven't checked recently but yeah I'm not too much of a fan on the cameras that are attached to the drone body uh mostly because you know as there's wind and it's shaking around you know the camera's going along with it so no. i'm really like it when it's detached from the body on a stabilizer yeah that's so a big thing about it yeah. yeah that was the biggest thing about it watch <laughs> casey neistat's uh <laughs> exclusive review on it oh it's pretty cool drone, yeah. yeah i'm like i said i'm pretty intrigued by it because of you know how you can take that off and put it onto a stabilizer yeah Wow, this is a short show. Look at the 35 minutes. Writers That's asking, great. what do we think of the disk drive 3D printer? I, I not don't know. There's too many 3D printers. I can't keep track of them all. Uh, and we got more coming in for review. And uh, <coughs> Sorry, guys. It kind of gets in the... I am not your source for, like, 3D printers. I like, know. Uh, we'll I'll show you how to make some stuff with 3D printers, but I don't yeah. <clears throat> Do we have to alter anything on the Flash Forge Creative Pro to print Ninja Flex? No, sir. No, mm. so it's all stock still. I, I still have my uh, my Ninja Flex Flex on extruder, and I haven't installed it yet because I'm mm, I'm yeah, making projects. Good. Especially with like Cheetah, you're able to print just as fast. While making this horn, I I, I came up with a discovery that uh, it's better to print faster than slower, which is crazy. Like. Uh, instead of printing 30 millimeters a second, doubling that speed to 60 millimeters a second created a very nice surface. But that's because there's no retraction required with the shape. It's all, it's just a cone that it has a little bit of an overhang with the spiral, but it ended up coming out really, really great. So I had to print it pretty fast on the Flash Forge. So it uh, depends on your part. You actually benefit by printing faster with Ninja Black sometimes. I don't know that. Is asking some good sources and tips to get the best prints with Micro 3D. Paige put together a guide on the Adafruit Learning site, um, right? Is that is that your best yeah, source? Yeah, I think we're going to have to add another one on like, how to set up uh, M33 FIO with it. Although I think it might be in there, the instructions for that. Let's go ahead and take a look. Is it the M? Yeah, it's like it's disguised as a here's, here's how to get Octoprint on it. But there's a lot of good tips and oh, settings here. Kind of setup, yeah. <clears throat> How to set up the Wi Fi and all that. You should already know all that. Using Cura. Mm -hmm. Last and week we talked about 3D. how to get the slicing right on there. Calibration. Using, uh, Raspberry Pi 2. Yeah, it's using the Cura engine to do all the slicing for you. But um, the I think quick tips that I can give you is to get the best um, like finish on it. Yeah, um, the best print Layer quality. height, uh, uh, point. There are 150 microns. Everything looks excellent on that setting. Uh, the what about speed? The speed, I leave it at 40 millimeters a second. Which is like, you can't do that. It's too fast. I like, guess you can. Yeah, you can. Um, with the retraction, I believe I have it at 0.8 millimeters for the retraction, which just ensures that it doesn't grind up or it doesn't you know, come out the, the, the other side. OK. Um, or the top side, you know? Yep. Um, for the fan speed, I keep it at 50% after the second layer. Um, oh, and I print at 240C um, for a lot of the prints. Um, mostly I thought it was because I was using a lot of PLA PHA, but it turns out that 
it keeps the flow going really good at 240. Okay. I have loaded here on the, s on the screen, mm -hmm. Pedro, is our profiles for Gura in um, Simplify 3D. So if you want to yes. check out our profiles, you can load these up and see if they work for you. Yeah. You have two different ones. You have one for two millimeter. What is that, like 0.2 millimeter layer height um, and three millimeter yes, layer height? Yes, yes, that's the layer height. We should probably put, put that in there. In the descriptor? In the descriptor, yeah. Descriptor. Cool. But you can check out those profiles, and those work with I'll have that linked, me. yeah. And I'll, I'll link it down after sure. the show. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, Simon just came in. Hello, Simon. Oops, Welcome. Simon. I want Spanish, Spanish subtitles here. You have a lot of fans. Oh, we should definitely do that. Oops. We, so we used to do um, just English subtitles on all of the videos, but oh, it just became so time-consuming. Yeah, it did. A lot of the... Yeah, like, subtitles on the live streaming is pretty hard, says writer. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. Yeah. One day we'll be able to do it. Um, yeah, we have a lot of speak, Spanish speaking people yes, at Adafruit. Disculpen, amigos. Disculpen. Yeah, the, the, all of like, the blog posts and all the other ancillary work that we have to do def uh, takes away from doing projects. And when prints fail and like you're sick and you know, you got to go eat, it drives us a little nuts sometimes. All we want to do is just finish a project and a lot of things get in the way. Mace to the <laughs> face. Mace to the face. <laughs> oh, no, no. Oh, normal videos, yeah. Um, again, it takes a lot of work because we have to do so much work goes into these, doing these every So week. many excuses, Pedro. I know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For the mace, what about a lightsaber? Yes. Lightsaber would be cool. Absolutely. Like a retract retracting mechanism would be awesome. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll look into the uh, Spanish subtitles. We'll ask um, maybe the... Um, uh, not the QA team, the uh, support team. Support team. Um, if there's if there's opportunities to do it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll try to do it. Okay, we'll we'll consider it. Try to be more international now. Yeah. Cool. I think that's it, guys. Yeah, he says. Yeah, he bets that Noah could make a lightsaber. I bet he could. That's okay. <laughs> Taking bets now. <laughs> Who thinks I can make yeah, a lightsaber? There's no real bets. I'm pretty sure yeah. you can. <laughs> I have to come up with next, next. I don't have the project plan. If you guys have any ideas, I, I, I kind of want to oh, make right after the, this. Yeah, because yeah, this is my last project, and then Paige is going to take up the next three. Yeah. Um, Sneak peek of the. Um, oh, okay. This could look so cool. I want to show the. The cool chair. Yeah. Well, let me get so ready. This was uh, PT's idea, having like a glowing chair. So this is going to be hooked up to. Um, using the feather sketch to grab the weather and it'll just light up a weather oh, chair, chair. Yeah. weather stool so, uh, i think if it's you follow me on instagram this is the thing that i've been trying to print for the last two, two weeks. weeks just because it takes like three days to print yeah. but holds uh it should hold, hold more than 150 pounds and i i think it's like unicorn it's really cheese good. Because of the way it it's has so the, comfortable, it's all it's so all comfortable. It's a yeah. it's a hunk of plastic. Yeah. Maybe if you print it as a Ninja Flex, it'd be more comfortable. So we have uh, standoffs with the um, feather or the huzzah board on here. It'll fit whichever one, and then the battery cotton candy chair. One of these um, slots. We were calling it the unicorn chair. Unicorn chair. <laughs> but this cheesy is the chair project. Yeah. And I was really happy with uh, how here's, this turned here's out. Here's Paige's really gothic sturdy. version. It's pretty large. And it's how much how much infill isn't it variable infill or the infill changes the degree? Actually, we'll, it, it's so we'll thick. talk about it next week. As uh, um, no, we, well, we next week we're at we're at Adafruit. Oh, okay. We can't like whenever we come out with it, we'll talk about how I did the infill. You can change that inside Simplify to sort of stagnate it to make your own 3D infill. Um, I think we talked about it before. How Type A machines customized version of Cura they're using like a 3D infill that. Uh, really increases the um, the structure of it the structural integrity yeah. cool okay people like it they think it looks cool yeah <laughs> i hope so it's, all uh, right there's a couple more things to do with it like the some ninja flex rubber feet on there yeah i think yeah. some pvc um tubes or we could just print the tube itself it's yeah pretty so strong. some some other just so that it's prints yeah. that we've done they were really um sturdy so it feels like it would work, so we'll, I'll try to do that. I think that's going to be it for this show. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, next week we'll be in New York uh, streaming live. 
Uh, the show might change the time because we're going to get there like Yeah, uh, I think I said in the chat room around 3 p.m. since her flight gets in like, somewhere around 11. Um, her hotel is right next to the office, so just a quick walk. Okay. Um, but, you know, after being up so early and you know, hopefully we'll have time to eat and all that. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Please, uh, please be sure to check out this week's project. And if you guys want to pick anything up, support the show. Support your maker habit with discount code GLOWFORGE at checkout. You get 10% off. Works with uh, anything in the shop except for software like and gift certificates. certificates. Yeah. You can, this works with a printer. You get free shipping on a printer. And 10% discount. Don't tell anybody I told you that. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. Just kidding. I think it's one of the uh, um, <coughs> secrets of that. Secrets? Yeah, if any printer, free shipping from Adafruit. And, uh, Don't tell them and that. And you get 10% <laughs> off. So it's probably the cheapest anywhere because um, you know, we have the ability to do that with uh, everything else being at uh, the, the margins that we're getting for it. Okay. So definitely take advantage of that. Mega Fair. Don't forget about the contest. We'll talk about it next week as well. Yeah. Thank you guys again. We'll see you next time, right here, but this time not here, in New York. Yep. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Music.